Hello, Edward Hurst from my gallery in Dorset, rather than a rather grand tent behind the Royal Hospital Chelsea in London. This would have been my 11th masterpiece. It's the only fair I do. It takes me the whole year in between to amass 20 odd things which I feel really represent my line of taste. I deal in 17th and 18th century British antiques and associated works of art. And um, in many ways, the buying of these is the most enjoyable bit. The difficult thing is to present yourself, to get yourself in front of the piece. And then really it's a split second decision as to whether you want it or not. Um, getting in front of the thing involves many contacts and much travel and hard work. Um, so there's so much that goes in to each masterpiece every year. From the age of about six or seven, I either wanted to be a rag and bone man or a tramp. And I suppose in many ways, being an antique dealer is a fair reflection of those two very, very honourable professions. Anyway, um, I'd like to show you one of the pieces that I would have taken to Masterpiece, which is marooned down here in Dorset. So we'll go downstairs and have a look at it. It seems a little unfair to call this just a pedestal or a cupboard, but that is what it is. Made during the reign of George II in about 1735, it's just about as powerful a piece of Palladio-inspired English furniture as you can get. Almost certainly designed by William Kent or possibly Henry Flickcroft, this is recorded in the infantry at Longleat as being in the little parlour in 1740 and would have supported a very grand musical clock. It's centred on this massive Apollo mask sitting on a sunburst within a wreath of laurels. These monumental trusses with husks and a campus, the reserve punched, really accentuate the design. It's been restored back to its original brown paint and parcel gilt, as so much furniture at this date was decorated so. And it's a very important discovery. One of the most exciting bits of Palladianism I've ever owned in 35 years. <laughs> 